Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the challenges we face at Gramwani in collecting data over phone calls. Notice the part calls. So I'm not talking about smartphones uh, with GPS and camera and internet connectivity. I'm actually talking about phone calls. So anybody could even pick up a landline and we could be collecting data on that. Um, I'm going to assume that uh, most people over here know the advantages of using uh, smartphones and uh, smart devices for collecting data. Um, being able to take photographs, being able to digitize quickly, being able to do reasonably large surveys similar to paper based forms, uh, getting GPS location uh, as a validating uh, component. Um, but there are limitations which uh, Amit. Uh, Amit had just mentioned uh, there are cost issues. Uh, you need to have somebody on the ground who is taking that survey. And uh, there are other issues which are related to literacy. So if you want people to take the survey themselves, then they need to be able to read and write. Right? Um, now, by one estimate, about 60% of people in India are illiterate. Uh, where literacy, the definition of literacy is them being able to sign their name. So that's that low a bar and yet uh, we have 60% people who are illiterate. Uh, so that literacy barrier comes in if you want them to take their own survey. Uh, cost is a major challenge, which is why Amit, as Amit mentioned, they, uh, uh, data collection is typically done in an episodic manner instead of it being a continuous activity. Um, and there are connectivity uh, requirements. Um, I've done enough research to know that there's good connectivity across the country, but there aren't enough devices, and there are still that many uh, holes where you will not get internet connectivity. So these are the challenges that um, you would have to deal with if you're using smart devices. Um, having said that, I'll also point out that paper-based forms are still the most prevalent methods of collecting data. Uh, that is across the world, it's not just in India. So then the question is, can we collect data without sending someone down to the field? Uh, one approach that Gramani has taken is to actually just use phone calls. And then we've asked ourselves, what can we do with phone calls? Because we uh, say that you don't need literacy, because it's all audio, and uh, you don't need major time connectivity, data connectivity. Uh, we are assuming over here that voice connectivity is present at a really large, uh, co covers a really large area of the country. We ended up using two services, two products. Uh, mobile money is uh, uh, the first thing. Uh, it's essentially a social network. Uh, so you can think of it as, say, if uh, many of us were tweeting over here today. Uh, what we do on Twitter is we log in read other people's tweets and then we retweet um, or uh, we write, up, write our own tweet. Um, if this was happening in voice, then what would happen is we would be uh, listening, we would be logging to Twitter, we will be listening to other people's messages, we would be recording our own message and we would be forwarding other people's messages. Now take that on a phone call. You will be calling up a phone number, you will be listening to other people's messages, you will be recording your own message and you will be forwarding these messages. At the basic level, that is what mobile money is. Uh, it's present currently in four states in India, um, and uh, we clocked about uh, two crore calls over the past three years, and, and uh, about 500,000 people access the service. So it gives you an idea of the scale. Um, voice survey is another technology that we built, which essentially what it does is you take a phone call, and then you are able to ask three different kinds of questions. You can ask multiple choice questions where you say that, okay, for option one, press one. For option two, press two. For option three, press three. You can ask numeric questions. An example is, what is your age? So the person is able to key in the age. And a third kind of question is audio response questions where the person is expected to speak the answer. Now, given these two kinds of services, um, and with mobile money, we are able to drive discussions and collect audio recordings. So over here, with mobile money, we get audio uh, data. With voice survey, we get some 
digital data and some for the third question we get the audio data. Now what are the challenges in using phone calls to collect this kind of data? Okay, uh, I think I've covered the benefits part quickly. Uh, the cost is significantly lower. You don't have to go into the field. So that means that you can use it for monitoring uh, at a much higher frequency than you would otherwise be able to do. Um, there is part, partial automatic digitization and uh, you have a, a much wider reach compared to uh, uh, smart devices. But the challenges, this is the part that's uh, actually quite interesting. Um, when you have nobody in the field and it's the person being surveyed that is taking the survey himself or herself, you need to ask what is the motivation for the person to take the survey. Right? If the motivation isn't right, then the person is going to get bored with the survey rather quickly. In our experience, before we get the answer to the first question of our survey, 50% people drop when you don't have the motivation right. If in the introduction you are able to explain what the purpose of the survey is and the person is able to identify the institution or the organization or the purpose, then you will get a higher response rate, but otherwise the response rate is going to be low. The other issue is you can't do more than five questions. I mean five is a, um, a heuristic, it's not really a hard limit. Uh, but what we've noticed is that if you have too many questions, people will get tired and then they'll get bored. Even if they're motivated enough, they'll say, yeah, I don't want to keep on, you know, talking to a machine at the other end, right? So you don't want to put more than five questions. So that's another uh, limit that we come across. What about the audio responses? Can you do something so that you can automatically extract information out of it? Well, the simple answer is you can't. You can't today. Um, people with iPhone, Siri will fail. It will not be able to extract out relevant data. Uh, there are technical reasons behind it. Uh, being that, uh, two of these reasons being that different phones have different kinds of mics uh, and hence the audio quality is different. And second is that uh, the information that is sent to our phone lines is actually compressed and modified so that only the audio part gets through and is saved in a very uh, compressed format so that humans can understand the audio but computers actually don't have enough information in that audio to identify what is being spoken. Um, keyword spotting may be possible. It's something that we are actually working with a couple of universities to figure out. Um, key, by keyword spotting, I mean, can we figure out if this word K was spoken in this audio or not? That kind of stuff may be possible. It's something, but it's cutting edge. That's, that's something that's being researched right now. Um, so what we've ended up doing is uh, we have like 12 people, 10 to 12 people sitting in our office that are actually sitting with headphones throughout the day and why they get mad at me for not being able to automate this. Um, they essentially listen to the audio, uh, they annotate the audio, they write the text um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's how it's been all manual for us as far as the audio is concerned. And, uh, the other thing, this is a quickly, uh, I'll just quickly show you a short audio of something that one of the people recorded when we asked them, please record your message after the meeting. Hello.